time to board. It's not every day you get to go on a steam train. And we've arrived at the end of the world post office. It's very serious. <laughs> <laughs> this is the beginning of the eight kilometer, four hour trail to Lapadaya. We're Craig and Kirsty, a full-time travel couple sharing our adventures here on YouTube. We upload new travel content every week from different parts of the world. Right now we're making our way through the entire country of Argentina and exploring everything it has to offer. If you enjoy seeing new places and real experiences, please subscribe and welcome to the adventures of Tideknot Travellers. and welcome to another video here in Argentina. We are in Tierra del Fuego at this awesome train station that's gonna take us on a train to the end of the world. So the train we're gonna get on today is actually the same route that the prisoners used to take on this island to go out to the forest and chop wood, which is how the town that we're staying in in Ushuaia got built. So the island used to have a huge prison and that's kind of what it was known for. Um, because of its position in the world right at the end, it was a really good, secure place to have a prison. So yeah, we're going to go and take this historical journey into the National Park and then go and explore. Uh, I think there's an old post office we're going to go check out um, and just see some of the nature out there. So let's go. So just as we handed our tickets into board, they give you some headsets and if you press number two we're going to listen to it in English. They also gave us some information which was really good because up until now we've had no information, we haven't known what we're doing. So now we can figure out where we're going when we get there. I think we just want to go check out the end of the World Post Office and uh, have a little wander around and see the nature. So yeah, exciting. We have 15 minutes to have a little explore, see the train uh, from the outside and enjoy the nature before we head off and do the rest of the journey. By the way, the train tickets were 4,900 pesos per person and then you have to pay 2,100 pesos per person for entry to the National Park. The train takes an hour to get there, 45 minutes to get back, but that's because we stopped now. Uh, we've got about three hours to explore the park when we get there and, and the sun is shining, so yay! So you get on the train at the main station and we've been on the train for around five minutes and then you arrive at La Macarena station and we've just come to the front to see the locomotive. It's pretty cool, it's not every day you get to go on a steam train. At this first stop, there's a waterfall to see. So from the station just down there, walking up a few steps, we can hear the waterfall. We don't know how much of a waterfall it is, but we're about to find out. It is lovely and it is cool, but it's very cramped on the trains, very squishy, and it's very touristy. So yeah. just be prepared for lots of people. But it is beautiful and it is very scenic. The train goes so slow, it's like sending me to sleep. But the audio is quite interesting. <laughs> Hearing about all the prisoners travelling on the train and everything is really cool. <laughs> you may have seen behind us there's lots of uh, staff queued up ready to capture people to get pictures and we're walking up here and there are a lot of people. <laughs> the waterfall is just up here. Whether it's worth it is another question. <laughs> Hola, aquí los invitamos a que van su foto con los presos. Over here, I'll your photo, my friend. You can look it. El valor de la foto, chicos, si quieren llevarla es de mil pesos y si la llevan también la tienen incluida en archivo digital. 
We get back on the train after looking around La Macarena and they will come on and try and sell you the photos they've taken of you at the first stop. A thousand pesos. It's fine, it's just very touristy. <laughs> Although it is quite touristy and crowded, the train journey to the end of the world is a really cool experience. Climbing aboard the vintage carriages pulled by a classic steam locomotive, you get to travel the five mile journey along the southernmost railway on Earth. More than that, you get to take in this unique Patagonian scenery as you travel calmly through the Tierra del Fuego National Park, all whilst listening to the fascinating audio of how less than 100 years ago, prisoners travelled along the same route morning and night to collect materials from the forest that were used to help build the infrastructure that can be seen in and around Ushuaia today. We jumped on the train here at the main train station. It's for some reason it's not included on the map. The train line goes along here, the black and white stripe line. We've just jumped off here at the end of the line. We are going to walk down here, which apparently takes about 30 minutes. And we've been told that the end of the world post office is down here. There is also a much longer hike that you can do along Lapataya Bay. Apparently this is 14 kilometers, takes about three hours. But we, as I said, we're going to walk 30 minutes or so down to the bay. After jumping off the train at the end of the line, we're now walking down a gravelly road, which we're hoping takes us half an hour to get down to the bay, down to the Beagle Channel, which we've been told is where the end of the world post office is. Yeah, we're hoping that's the way. And the reason we say hoping is because if you're here and you only speak English, there's not a lot of information to help you out. We've asked some of the guides here um, and they don't speak very much English, a little bit broken English, but there's no information. They don't give you any maps or any information or anything. Um, so yeah, this is the only like walk that we would have time to do before we have to get the train back, which we've paid for, it's all included in the ticket. So we have like two and a half hours now. Um, good thing is we've lost all the tourists because <laughs> it took us a little while to figure things out. So now we have peace and quiet from all the groups. So hopefully we'll just, by the time we get to the post office, they'll have all done a bit. And hopefully it'll be nice and quiet at the post office too. And we can enjoy the bay and go check out this cool place. Yeah, I've got to say this trail doesn't seem like the most pedestrian friendly. Um, it's a bit dodgy but yeah as soon as you get off the train there is actually a couple of maps there's not much else there's some taxis waiting we want to hike to um, La Pataya but we're not sure if there will be taxis there uh, for us to be able to get home so we're doing this short walk yeah. and hoping that we can get to the end of the world post office and then back to the train in time because the last train leaves at 4 p.m. I can see the bay this way, so it's looking beautiful. And although it's all been a little bit crazy and we're not knowing what we're doing, the train journey itself was actually really calm and peaceful and lovely. And the uh, information about the prisoners and like what happened to them was really interesting. I love that kind of stuff. So it was good. It's just a very touristy thing to do. Uh, it's felt the most rushed and unorganized out of all the trips we've done since we've been here in Ushuaia. But we're kind of happy that we hung back, figured out what we wanted to do and then we've just head off on our own on this dusty track. But worth it, the bay looks stunning, excited to get there. <laughs> so we've arrived, it was about a 15, 20 minute walk along the dusty track and then the view of the bay comes in and the post office is here, yay! There's also some lovely benches. Luckily, Craig and I bought some sandwiches last night at a cafe called Marco Polo, which we found that's really nice. Got ourselves a couple of sandwiches that we've got in my backpack. So we're gonna sit on one of these benches, grab a bit of lunch, and then go and have a little explore inside the post office. Pretty nice spot for lunch. It's like um, cheese and sun blush tomato. Yeah, there's currants in the bread over here. I noticed they do that quite a lot. They make their bread sweet. I like it, it's okay. And I got a ham and cheese baguette. Nice and simple, but tasty and does the job. And this view, what a stunning view. I can't believe we only had to walk like 
15, 20 minutes for this. Great lunch spot. <laughs> We've arrived at the end of the world post office, just behind us here. You can see it's a fairly simple looking building and I didn't realise that it was actually a pier. You can see the stunning backdrop of the Chilean mountains on the other side of the Beagle Channel. Really spectacular location. It's even got a little tiny lighthouse on the end of the pier. <laughs> We've got our passports with us because you can pay a few hundred pesos to get them stamped. So we thought that would be a really good memento. Now let's go inside and check it out. Oh, it's busy in here. <laughs> There's no one here. Great. You can send a postcard to back home from the end of the world. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that. Send someone a postcard from the end of the world. It is just under 22 degrees at the end of the world. And we're just sending our postcards. <laughs> we chose three of the same ones. <laughs> Gracias. Wow, nice. Son 500 pesos. Gracias. It's very serious. <laughs> it's very serious. <laughs> serious stuff. <laughs> <laughs> There's penguins from the end of the world in our passports now. <laughs> this is the glacier that we climbed the other day, Glacier Marcial, our first ever hike in Patagonia. Just to go here. Might have to get this. <laughs> There's so many like memorabilia and so many cool things in here. Um, the guy who just stamped our passports for us, he said he's been working here for 30 years. He's such a sweet guy. It looks like the guy. It's him. <laughs> it is, isn't it? yeah. He's even got these muck up dollar bills as like magnets with his face on. It's really fun. You can see there's loads of pictures of visitors and memories. We timed that so well. Look at all the buses that have arrived now. There's about six buses there at least. All these people, we had one of those benches all to ourselves coming over here. When we walked into the end of the world post office, there was no one inside there. We opened the door, the only person in there was the man working there. And just look at it now. <laughs> oh, that was lucky. Had no idea this was gonna happen, but I just love it when that happens. Now we're gonna go and take a little walk over in nature. Weather changes quickly in this part of the world. It's just started raining. So we've come prepared, we've got our coats. But yeah, we've got like 20 minutes or so, so we're gonna do a little bit of the trail to get a feel for it, and then we're gonna head back and get the train back. So this is the beginning of the eight kilometer, four hour trail to Lapataya, which we're considering coming back to do tomorrow. That's why we're trialing it. Yeah, we might do it tomorrow, but for now we're just gonna get a little taster of it because if we do come back and do it tomorrow we've got to pay the park entry fee again so it's another 2100 pesos each so we're kind of like weighing it up plus we only have like two days left here and we want to do some other hikes so we've got to figure out do we just see a snippet of this or do we come back and do the full thing tomorrow we don't know either way we're but going to show you a little bit of it now i do quite want to do it because it hugs the shoreline so it is stunning yeah. and uh, la Pataya is supposed to be beautiful as well and i want to see a bit more of tierra del fuego national park it's looking glorious so far. Those views out across to the Chilean mountains, across the Beagle Channel, glorious.
We made our way back to Tierra del Fuego National Park by bus to do a few of the hikes and we're so glad we did. The trails were beautiful and scenic with views across to Chile. The calm views over the Bay of La Pataya, mixed with the forest scenery, made for a beautiful day exploring. After the 8km hike, we stopped off at the visitor centre at Alacush for a coffee, with views over River La Pataya, before embarking on a second hike to make it to Puerto Arias, where you'll find the end of the world sign and be so close to Chile you could almost touch it. After hiking over 12 kilometers, we were thankful for the bus that took us straight back to Ushuaia. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. It's free and means you'll see each time we share a new video. Thanks again and we'll see you on the next one. Join us next time as we head to El Calafate to explore one of nature's most mesmerizing creations, Perito Moreno Glacier. For daily updates on our travels, head over to our Instagram at Tidenot Travelers or for exclusive behind the scenes content, we'd love you to join us on Patreon if you'd like to support our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. That's how the town got built basically and that was what they had to do. So that's the, uh, the way Ushuaia, oh, no. <laughs> uh, due to its location in the world, it obviously was a really good place for security to have uh, a prisoner. <laughs> to have a prisoner. Because of its location in the world, obviously it's very good for security. So the prisoners used to take this exact train journey, go out into the wood, get forest, get forest. <laughs> go out into the wood and get forest. Go out into the forest and get forest.